Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> the whole point is to make videos about books I'm reading or have read. I'm gonna make a book about... no, I'm not gonna make a book. I'm gonna make a video. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> let's try that again. <laughs> Take two. Okay. So, ideally, I would be making a video about a book I had read or several books I have read. <clears throat> but the problem is, just lately, I can't seem to finish a book. <laughs> I keep trying, I promise. So we're going to talk about everything I'm trying to read and can't seem to get through. First up, and I know <clears throat> I've talked about this one before, I'm still trying to finish A Conjuring of Light. Okay, so I'm like 40% of the way through, according to my the Goodreads tracking thing. <clears throat> and I like it better than whatever that last one was, whose name I can't even remember, I can't be bothered to remember. Like the first one, Dark Shade of Magic, loved it. Second one, Magical Olympics, don't care. Uh, I'm way too much focused on Lila. And this one is better. Um, it uh, has like focus on a wider cast and everything. By my not as enthusiastic angle, and, you know, um, I will try not to spoil this. I will not get into details. Um, but it's basically a zombie novel, and I'm not into zombies. Like, not my thing. I mean, it's a magical zombie novel, but at the end of the day, it's a zombie novel. And the, the main antagonist, at least thus far, is just evil for the sake of evil. Like, we don't really get a lot of facets. We don't, you know, he's just, he's bad. There are zombies. He's, he's like creating zombies or zombie-like entities. And um, now we've got to fight the zombies. And, <laughs> and even though it's magical and fantastical and it's a brilliant world building, um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a zombie person. Not my thing. So I'm struggling a little bit to get through it. Um, so there's that. I, I do, I will, before the end of the year, hopefully well before the end of the year, I will finish it. I'm determined. But, okay, so. <laughs> now this is maybe too, TMI. But I like to also to read in the bathtub. Um, but I don't like to bring my hardcover books into the bathtub because they're nicer and they're heavier to hold. So I tend to read paperbacks in the bathtub. So one paperback that I had started rereading um, is the India, the India Fan by Victoria Holt. I had it lying around because I went through a phase where I read a ton of Victoria Holt, like in, I don't know, middle school, high school, even into college because I remember reading um, the one about the opal, the black opal in my freshman year in college. So, um, yeah, so I started rereading this because this was probably one of my favorites that I remember being, like, I, re I remembered it fondly, I guess. So, um, you can see I, I'm not very far uh, into this reread um, because if you saw them in Freya in the Morning video, I realized there were some serious issues with that book. So then I was curious, well, is all of Victoria Holt, you know, so, so now I'm, I'm and, and it's funny because reading it now, I'm like, wow, the um, tropes are so similar between the two books. And I'm sure they are across the board because gothic romance gonna have a very similar set of tropes, I think. But anyway, and then the other one that I picked up to reread, I read this, uh, when I was 13 or 14. And um, I mentioned this, I think, in my last video, but Sword in the Stone was one of my favorite Disney films. And when I realized it was based in part on this book, I really wanted to read it. <clears throat> so um, I'm reading the first section, which is The Sword in the Stone. Um, I didn't actually like the book very much when I was younger. I don't think 
um, I realized it was supposed to be funny. The camera is shaking because the cat is climbing on the, the rigging. The, the, the. Crowley, don't help. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't, um, I don't think I got the humor. Um, right now, I enjoy it more. I can appreciate it more for what it is. Um, but it is a bit repetitive. It's basically, right now at least, um, a series of small, like, events, right? There's not really a whole lot, um, kind of connecting them. Uh, Arthur, well, M Wart, gets turned into the fish, and then he gets turned into a bird, and then he gets turned into an ant. And also they meet Robin Hood, which, um, no, the sun's trying to come out. Um, which is a whole other, like... <laughs> I didn't know then, I mean, I love Robin Hood, but I didn't know then that there's roughly maybe a thousand, the cat is loving on the camera now. He's like rubbing his, Crowley, Crowley. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. Now with Crowley out of the room, although he may come back and start howling, uh, that is something that is in fact likely to happen. As I was saying, uh, they meet Robin Hood. Um, it seems to me like maybe this version of Arthur is set closer to the time of Robin Hood than the time historically that I think most people set Arthur. It's really hard for me to tell, but like my understanding, and I'm not a historian, if I'm wrong, somebody please, please, please correct me, is that there's roughly like almost a thousand years between Arthur and Robin Hood. Um, and not, not to mention that they're in two very different parts of, of the British island. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, it's all meant in fun, I guess. And, um, I do like it more now than I did then. I wouldn't say I'm, like, blown away by it. I am waiting to see what happens once we get out of Sword of the Stone and, uh, into the next parts of it. All right, so then... Another book I have picked up is a Names by Matt Ruff. I picked this up because my husband highly recommended it. Um, I did not enjoy Ready Player One. I liked the movie pretty well. I think it just fed all my nostalgia. Um, but the book I really struggled to get through. I had to put it down once. Um, what's his face? I don't even know. Ward? Was that a name? What the fuck was his name? Anyway, sorry swears sorry but um that kid um like started emailing um artemis and uh, over and over like once we got to the i i had to actually put it down for a really long time before picking it up and finishing it because i just couldn't stand the toxicity there um as somebody who's had the stalkers and things it's just it wasn't it wasn't good for me it wasn't i didn't anyway um, and the fact that he, at the end of the day, is rewarded for his bad behavior, it, it, it's, well, I'm not, I'm not here to critique it, um, but, <laughs> anyway, um, Matt Ruff is one of my husband's favorite authors, and he was like, well, I think you'll like it more <laughs> than Ready Player One, which, to be fair, is not hard to do, I mean, just about anything, um, even zombie fantasy book, better than Ready Player One. Um, so again, I haven't gotten very far. Um, I do like it so far. I have not read other Matt Ruff books. My husband has tried many, many times to get me to read them. Uh, I picked up Set This House in Order and, like, I don't think I made it three pages in. That book is, as I understand it, intentionally confusing. So it probably wasn't the best place to start. Um, but anyway, um, this one is about, like, this guy, he's a Sherpa Basically, people hire him to help them get through um, complicated video games, you know, like questy video games, so he can make sure you have all of the supplies you need, like all the the swords and, and weapons and things and the power-ups and whatever. Um, I don't play video games, so I'm only really... I, I watch my husband and kids play, so I have, like, 
an observer's understanding of video games. I do not have a player's understanding of video games. But so far, um, I know enough to enjoy what I've read. Um, basically, he gets a client, um, like a mysterious client. He's being paid a ton of money to get this guy, like, through, you know, like, Anyway, um, and, and basically, and then there is like a counter agent who wants information from him about this client. And over time, he starts to sort out who this person, this client is. It's, I think it says it in the flap. Um, maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But, um, oh, you know what? And also, I think Matt Ruff wrote Lovecraft Country. If I mean, I think that's the one people might know from the HBO thing. <sighs> My daughter's being very loud in her her school class. I don't know what class she's in, but they're very loud about it. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so far, so good. Um, so that that one is probably the best, well up until now the one i was enjoying most 88 names but yesterday this came in the mail i'm so excited okay so um and again if you've seen uh i think it was the one i did the the astrological book tag where um one of it was like oh an author with beautiful writing and i picked ishiguro um i really 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 enjoy his work and this is his latest and I mean, I started it last night and uh, I had to make myself put it down so I would go to bed. So I think this will probably be the one I finish next um, because I think I'll probably read through it pretty quickly. It is uh, Clara and the Sun. It is about um, an artificial intelligence um, named Clara who uh, she gets her power. She's solar powered, basically. She gets her power from the sun. So she's kind of really enamored of the sun and she begins to create this complex belief system based around the sun and um so far like she's very close to being bought because what these are these are bought as companions people rich people buy them as companions for their kids right built-in best friend or whatever i think they're called af's artificial friend or something like that um and so uh, you know, a lot of the others in the store have been bought and Clara is still waiting. There's a girl who keeps coming back to look at her and is promising that she'll be back to buy her soon. Um, and uh, it's clear that the girl is ill or, you know, has some kind of uh, physical, um, I don't want to say disability, differently abled, right? Like, um, she walks a little bit unsteadily, so I'm, I'm thinking... There's some kind of physical ailment involved uh, and maybe having the companion is like kind of having a service animal or something. It's it's hard to tell um, because I am still so early in, but gor gorgeous. Right? It's, it's so simple and well-written because it's from the point of view of Clara. So she's like a child almost. She She's learning about the world by looking out the window of the store and observing people and figuring out how humans, you know, work and, and behave. And um, she's just super observant and, you know, and it's already just a beautiful, beautiful book. So maybe this is just my, my time for uh, orange books. I don't know. <laughs> the year of orange books. Um, so that is everything I am currently reading. Uh, and... You know, I also am not reading very fast because I am editing um, The Ghosts of Marshall Lee Park uh, and I am working on, I just started a new uh, original project, plus I'm still trying to rewrite an old manuscript from a year or so ago. Um, so there's a lot going on writing-wise and I have limited amount of time, so it's like, do I write or do I read? <laughs> um, and when I'm writing, uh, like when I'm, when it's, when it's, you know, writing time, then the reading kind of takes a back seat. I, I read like a ton of stuff the first two or three months of the year, and then it just kind of all came to a halt. 
um, in April, like into March and into April, I think. Um, and I think that's normal. I think people go in cycles and it's just like trying to find the thing that, um, you feel like reading or that like when you pick it up, you feel like sticking with it. Definitely Clara and the Sun is that for me. I think 88 Names will be that way. I will keep reading this one in the bathtub, but um, I don't take very long baths, so it's going to be a long time before I'm through all this. I think it's like 600 and some pages long. Uh, but um, yeah, so... Oh, you want to see something funny? Just random. This is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover my my name on that, but like, is it, <laughs> cover my name, you can't see any of it. Okay, let's see. Can I show it to you in a way? This is a Michael T. Weiss fan club um, card uh, from back, if any of you ever saw the TV show, The Pretender, oh, don't look at that. Um, <laughs> it's not like it's a secret. My name is on my YouTube, but, um, uh, you know, um, back when The Pretender was on in, what, the 90s, uh, I guess I was a member of the Michael T. Weiss fan club, so there you go. Uh, I had forgotten, and then my daughter found it stuck in something, and then I ended up using it as a bookmark, because I can never have too many random scraps of paper to <laughs> mark things, I guess. Anyway, random aside, um, so yeah, that's everything I am reading. That's like five books in progress at the moment. Um, plus the stuff I'm writing and, um, and editing and rewriting. And that's keeping me busy. That is keeping me very busy. And, um, I thought about doing a video about like all the, the review issues going, the Twitter kerfuffle, kerfluffle, kerfluff. Okay. Um, but you know what? So many people have done it. I did write a blog post about why I personally do not read reviews of my work. Um, go over to my website, which is linked below if you want to read that. Uh, it's, it's, it should be one of the most recent posts on the blog. Um, but yeah, uh, that's everything. And uh, hopefully, as soon as I finish one of these books, I can come back with a more like full review. Um, and or if anything else interesting happens online, I will come back and talk about that. Amy.